Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how we can hack our PSP console to the latest custom firmware. And installing custom firmware on your PSP console enables you to do all sorts of things and unlocks your full potential of the PSP console. And you can run homebrew, have all sorts of different games on your memory stick and copy your UMD disks onto your system and just have all sorts of fun uh, installing plugins and all sorts of different utilities so we're going to be hacking it into the 6.61 version with infinity 2.0 and this custom firmware is permanent and will work for all models so that would be 1000 2000 3000 psp go and the PSP Street, also known as the E1000. So a few things to take in consideration, guys, is to have a fully charged battery on your system. That way you will prevent any problems when installing custom firmware. And just a disclaimer that you have a potential of breaking your system if you don't follow these steps carefully. And I will not be responsible for anything that happens to your device, so you're doing this at your own risk. Now there are a few things you're gonna need. Obviously you will need a computer with internet connection to download some files and install them on a memory card. So. You will need a memory card and for this demonstration I will be using a 256 megabyte card. Next you will need a USB connection to connect your PSP to your PC and that's how we're going to transfer our files onto our memory card. If you don't have a USB connection you can use a USB dongle and I'll have a link in the description down below for you on this model and this works great because you can use all sorts of different cards on this dongle and we have the micro SD card slot at the top, a regular SD card, and also it will take the Memory Stick Pro Duos, no problem. Right now I'm currently on version 3.52, and we're gonna have to upgrade this to 6.61. First thing we're gonna do is format our Memory Stick. Make sure you back up all of your files if you do have saved games and things like that on your Memory Stick. So let's go into our system settings and we're going to go to format memory stick format completed perfect now we can connect it to our PC with USB connection let's grab our cable and connect it here at the top USB mode is now enabled on our PSP. Now we can head on over to our PC. Here we are on our PC and we have a USB drive opened up here and this is our PSP drive. So here we have five different folders. Looks good, everything is looking great. Now head on over to the first link in the description down below and that will take you to the playstation.com website and what we want to do is download the latest version 6.61 so scroll down and hit agree and download now perfect next we want to download our infinity 2.0 custom firmware so let's click on downloads down below here perfect next we want to download the pro c2 custom firmware 6.61 and we're going to go to the walolo.net link in the description down below. And we want to click on this link here, the 661 underscore pro dash C2. So click on that. And it will take you to a Google Drive. And now what we want to do is hit this little button up here that says download. There we go. Now it's finished. And now what we want to do is show in our folder. Very nice. Now we want to create a new folder and name this update. And we're going to drag this into this folder here, the eboot.pbp. And that is the 6.61 update. Now we're going to go into our USB drive of the PSP. And what we want to do is copy this folder onto our memory card. So let's open up our PSP folder here on this side, go into our game, and from here we're gonna copy this update folder into this folder. And it shouldn't take more than 10 seconds to copy over. 
Now that's finished copying, we can head back on our PSP console and update it to 6.61. Back on our PSP, we can disconnect our USB mode connection. And we're going to go under our game, memory stick, and you should see the update version 6.61. So let's run that. There we go, PSP update version 6.61. Let's start that. And we're just gonna follow the instructions here. So it says to agree. Let's press this button to continue. And do you accept the user agreements? Yes. Press O to start. And this should take a few minutes. I would say maybe three to seven minutes for it to fully update. Once the update is complete, you can either press X or O. For me, it's O because this is a Japanese version uh, console. Here we go. Now we can check the firmware here. Let's go into our system settings. Go under our system information. And there it is, version 6.61, perfect. Now we can go back on our PC. Let's enable our USB connection again. And now we're gonna install the remaining files, hack our system, and have some fun. Back in our PC, we want to extract these two files. And what we want to do is right click and use our extracting program. You can either use 7-zip or any other uh, program like WinRAR to extract these files. If you don't have an extracting program, I will have 7-zip in the description down below for your convenience to install. It's very easy to do. So let's right click and extract files here. Perfect. And now we're going to have two different files here. And what we want to worry about is just the PSP uh, folder. So let's blow that up here. Here's our game. And what we want to do is copy these folders into our PSP game folder. Let's throw that in here. Perfect. Now we're going to go back and we are going to extract the infinity 2.0 files. So let's right click and extract files. Now we're going to have a new folder called infinity-2.0.3. Let's open that up. So we have two different folders here. We have one called PSP Go and one called Standard. For our PSP Go users, you're going to be using this folder. And for all others, you're going to be using this standard folder. So what we're going to do is open that up. And we have a eboot.pbp file. And we're going to open our update folder in our game, our PSP drive. And we're going to copy this on here. And we are going to replace those files. Or just a file. Perfect. Now we are ready to install custom firmware on our PSP, so let's head on back. Back on our PSP, we can disconnect from USB connection and remove our cable because we no longer need this. Let's head on over to our game under memory stick. And here you should see four different options. We have Infinity 2, a CIPL flasher for Pro C, the fast recovery, and the pro update. So the first thing we're gonna do is go into our pro PSP firmware update. So let's run that. Nice, now we have something pop up on the corner here. We have Pro C by Team Pro, thank you guys. Press X to launch custom firmware, press triangle to uninstall custom firmware, 
hold L to reinstall custom firmware, press R to exit. So we're gonna press X to install and launch the custom firmware. So it says PSP FAT1000 detected and it's writing all sorts of different files. Everything looks okay. It says completed at the bottom. Press X to start custom firmware. Let's press X. Now we should reboot. Perfect. Now let's go check out our custom firmware. Go into system settings. And we're gonna go under our system information. And there it is, Pro C, perfect. And the MAC address is disabled, which is great. Now we're gonna go back and install Infinity 2.0. Let's run Infinity 2.0. There we go, Infinity version 2.0.3. Now it says press X to install Infinity. Let's press X. It says installation complete. Press X to reboot. Let's press X again. So what we're going to have to do next is go to our memory stick again and run Infinity 2.0 one more time. Okay, so here is the main menu. Welcome to Infinity. Now we want to press the left button here and it says installed modules we want to select the pro custom firmware because that's what we just installed so let's uh, press X here and that's basically it now we can just exit by hitting the home button and pressing X and it should reboot All right, once your system reboots, what we want to do is power it back off and we're going to have to hold the power button up and wait until that green light turns off. Nice. And now we're going to turn it back on. And this will completely have the permanent custom firmware ready to go. If you don't do the restart, the firmware will not work. So let's go check out our system settings. Go under our system information and you should see the infinity symbol next to 6.61 and the MAC address missing. And there we go. can press the select button to bring up the VSH menu. There it is. And you can go into recovery menu. In the recovery menu, you have all sorts of different settings and configurations, but you don't need to mess with that. So we're just gonna go back here. Congratulations guys, you now have custom firmware permanently installed on your PSP console. Now you can start installing all sorts of different homebrew plugins, utilities, and have so much fun. So if you need help in installing any sort of homebrew, please check out my playlist in the description down below for all the different tutorials that I have available for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Any questions, comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video like this in the future.
Thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.